Hello, fellow key searchers. Thanks again for joining me on another installment of my ideas for the Houston puzzle. A quick shout out to Barbara Timmons and the UK for inspiring me. I wanted to elaborate on some of the previous clues discussed in the first video. Um, one of them being the flower, a lark spur, which was brought to my attention, may be a reference to the spurs of cowboys in Texas. The jewel is a ruby, um, which may be connected to Araby, the old way of saying Arabia. Uh, looking at old clues that I revisited in my first video, I showed or discussed the memorial uh, wall at Tranquility Park, uh, memorializing the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. When I looked at the plaque, I noticed there were some uh, very interesting choice words. Um, the moon has long been humanity's treasure trove, mankind's quest for the secrets of the moon. So I wanted to continue with the Space City and NASA theme um, and looking for more supporting evidence. So I looked at the sand dune in the background behind the genie and noticed it's represented oddly since sand dunes are pretty smooth and um, symmetrical. And I thought, well, what could be um, at Tranquility Park that could be represented by the sand dune. And I noticed the walls of the memorial area of the park are rough hewn, uh, as you can see here, in jagged different directions, asymmetrical. And then a bonus, the portal glass is meant to represent the path um, of the mission to the moon phases. The next thing I looked at was uh, someone mentioned in the Facebook groups that there's no shadow cast by the pillar with the camel. Um, I, in the previous video, I mentioned those angle tilted blocks next to that pillar represent the entrance to the underground garage at Tranquility Park. So therefore, if you think about phys uh, physics, um, math, uh, mathematics, one knows that shadows are sucked into black holes. Um, and perhaps since there, it's an entrance to an underground area, there is no shadow cast that gets absorbed. And here's that entrance at Tranquility Park. As you can see, I think it's a pretty good representation of those tilted angled blocks. I then looked at the uncropped version of the painting and noticed that weird line, curved line at the bottom um, as outlined here. And I realized, wow, it's a pretty good match for Tranquility Park. So I'm going to continue with the Persia Arabia theme connection um, and the NASA connection as the genie represents the rocket blasting off with the uh, water uh, spout being spout down and the pillars in the park representing the rocket boosters with the water being blasted down from above. Again, the Persia Arabia connection, I believe Byron Price chose Texas because of the oil connection, which are um, all had headquarters or offices in and around the Tranquility Park area at the time that he was there. In fact, the Gulf oil building, I've been told, is very iconic, as you can see in this image. You could have seen it for miles around. The Penn's oil building was actually new, newish around the time that he would have been there, only a few years old, um, and had won prizes for its amazing um, geometric shape.
So continuing uh, the Persia-Arabia connection, I next looked at the Hobby Center that was once Sam Houston Coliseum and Music Hall, originally just Sam Houston Hall, as shown here, that hosted the Arabia Shriners Circus. And in fact, the building entrance ways looked like something you'd find in the Middle East. Therefore, my contention is that um, the animals are meant to represent the circus, not Herman Park Zoo, as most people believe. In fact, this original building was made of wood, as the verse says, um, through the wood no lion fears, which in fact, lions are a huge part of a circus. So looking at what it might have looked like at the time that Byron was there, I found this image, and at that time, that building continued to host the Arabia Shriners Circus, music concerts, and sporting events. Again, connected to the verse, they all would use whistles. I next looked at pop culture inspirations um, for the genie, for the image, and lo and behold, I realized, oh, uh, maybe it's tied to I Dream of Genie that as shown here um that's a trope of genies crossing their arms i don't think it's meant to represent any particular individual or historical figure other than just the eccentricities of genie behavior um so then i looked at why the show that was very popular at the time uh that byron would have grown up on seeing um it, the premise of the show is a genie that marries an astronaut um, and so I realized, hey, that memorial wall panel has an astronaut on it. So I'm thinking the genie, the camel, and the rhino are all looking at that wall panel. Continuing to provide evidence to justify the pop culture inspiration slash connection, um, most people accept the Chicago image is based on Time Band. It's a very popular movie at the time. Then I looked at Boston um, that most people originally thought represented uh, the Columbus statue that was then proven not to be correct as the artist JJP told us it was just the model that posed to represent a standard Salem witch. I next looked at Cleveland, um, which again, the artist JJP uh, mentioned was a model, I believe a family member, um, that was based on, and the image was based on Soldiers and Sailors Monument, a Civil War monument. As we all know, Byron Price was a huge fan of Civil War history. And for years, we all wondered why the centaur had the metallic military looking cask um, helmet on. Um, so then I looked at closer image, image shots of the monument and noticed that there was a circle with a triangle inside, just like the image that most people just associated with Greek mathematicians. But perhaps there is this deeper connection or closer connection. The next thing I looked at was uh, the genie itself represented in such a basic way, shirtless with a white linen cloth masking his face and covering his face, um, which is not very common of genies as shown here, they're colorful, vibrant um, characters. In fact, the historical jinns, genies, were all these super over the top, bright, you know, odd characters that could sometimes even be scary and, you know, malevolent. So, I thought, well, maybe they, the artist made a mistake and just represented a typical um, Middle Eastern uh, male uh, way of dressing. Um, but again, even those are colorful as shown here. They're not your standard basic white linen. With that, I realized um, I was told perhaps it's a shout out to this guy, Thomas Edward Lawrence, the British archeologist known to the world as Lawrence of Arabia. Again, there's that connection. 
Um, his autobiography is actually the seven pillars of wisdom, just like the seven pillars in the image, um, which we have all associated with the month of July, as every image in the book represents a month of the year. So again, that white linen cloth head cover, uh, he in fact did wear one. And just a point of note, um, the, gene, the genie in the image is not wearing a turban. We all recognize what a turban is. And with that, I'll end um, letting you know there's more to come. I, as I've already alluded to the verse one interpretation, I will have that up soon enough. Thanks again. Let me know your feedback in the comments below.